Hello, welcome to episode six of my Knit and Natter podcast, my video podcast. Libby has come to say hello. <laughs> I'm a little late posting this one this week because both of, well, Christina is on half term, which means all of Catherine's classes are canceled for two weeks as well. Well, the places that normally run them are more available, I guess, to doing things for older kids. The kids who would normally be in school. Uh, but they are both at loose ends this week, which means I don't have my usual time when Catherine is taking a nap and Christina is at school to do my podcast. Although Catherine's also been not napping so much this week, which I think is because Christina's around. She's too excited. I'm hoping I'm not ready for her to give up naps. Um, here comes Libby some more. So... This is my podcast. Sorry, my name is Jennifer, and I am coming to you from Inverness in Scotland, where it is currently raining. If you are going to do a default forecast for Scotland, it might rain, would cover most circumstances. You could hardly go wrong saying there's a good chance it's going to rain today. Um, apparently, this is going to be with these podcast. If you hear any yelling in the background, Christina and Catherine are both home. They're both engaged watching telly, so hopefully I get a little quiet time. Um, <laughs> just Libby's ears. They move. Just... So to start with, I have one finished object for this week and one from a year ago. The jumper I'm wearing is my year ago one. I knit this for Halloween last year. We all went as characters from inside out. We went as the emotions. Uh, Christina was disgust. She had a green dress. Catherine was joy in a yellow dress, although it really should have been a green dress. She's yellow. She has a green dress. Uh, I was sadness in my my sadness jumper and crisp was fear. We didn't have an anger. Sometimes you just have to work with the babies you have. Uh, but we went as inside out characters last year and this one was actually designed to be a sadness jumper. Uh, it's the Finley jumper by Kate Heppel and she wanted a sadness jumper. It's knit out of Sublime Evie. I had exactly this much left over and it was a good one to wear today because today's kind of a cuddly snuggly day and it does not get any more cuddly and snuggly than this jumper in this yarn um, it's a cotton blend which i don't normally think of as a good option for knitting cotton doesn't have a lot of stretch but it's really soft and fluffy and it's also a really light yarn it has almost no weight which makes it a good option for large jumpers for large women as it doesn't have a lot of weight you don't wind up with a jumper that weighs more than the cat sat in your lap so but it's just wonderful and squishy and perfect and I finally got around to weaving in the last couple of ends I ran out of time so I had some more ends to weave in I finally got around to weaving in the ends and I washed it recently so I get to wear it today Catherine is yelling from the other room, so I'm going to have to pause this for a second, and I will go see what she needs. Sorry about that. It appears Catherine just needed me for a minute. She'd thrown all the crayons on the floor and wanted them picked up. So, isn't it fun being mum? Uh, so, my Finley jumper is my first finished object, last year's finished object. My other one is my Rhinebeck hat by Willie Wormhead. And it is enormous. It fit, It actually fit really well when I had my hair pulled up in a ponytail a minute ago. Uh, it has lots of extra room. And what I did yesterday when we were at the park and the wind was blowing was I folded the brim under and it kept my head lovely and warm and it wasn't as enormous. Although I had it on this morning, my hair was up and it fit with the brim not folded under. It fit really well. And I could not be happier yay 
with this hat with the yarn. I think it's a wonderful combination. It's really nice. Uh, the silly thing about this hat, it's a woolly warm head. That's the name she prefers to go by online. Uh, released the hat pattern last weekend, just in time. It's the Rhinebeck hat and Rhinebeck in knitting parlance refers to a wool and fiber show, a sheep show really, it's mostly an animal show in Rhinebeck, New York, upstate New York. And it's a huge festival and it is a thing to knit a jumper to show off. I believe it's like outside in barns, upstate New York, mid-October, it can be cold. So knitters like to show off their best jumper that they knit just for this year to show off at Rhinebeck. And some people have noticed they don't have enough time to knit a jumper, but Ms. Wormhead is going to Rhinebeck this year, so she released the Rhinebeck hat. And then since she was reaching a milestone on her subscriber mailing list, she gave away copies, uh, she gave out download codes for the people on the list to get this hat for free. So I got the hat for free which was a wonderfully kind gesture. And then I didn't have any suitable yarn. And this is not even a shape of hat I normally like. I don't think they flatter me. I prefer more of a beanie or a tam. I'm sorry, not a beanie, a beret or a tam. This is a beanie. But it is so pretty that I knew I just had to have it. So I went online and I ordered yarn from Ripples Crafts. No one's going to be surprised to hear that. She had just started this base, her 100% BFL. Um, it's a DK weight, which is what the hat calls for. And she had just gotten it, just started dyeing some colors, was doing a lot of these highly variegated ones. They're all one-off, unrepeatable ones. Um, she calls the range storms, and then they just get a number saying the order in which she dyed them. They're non-repeatable. Uh, and so even though I'm going to see her at the Loch Ness Knitting Festival this weekend, I had to order yarn to knit this hat to wear to the Loch Ness Knit Festival. And I included a note to the seller saying I've ordered the variegated yarn and I've actually picked out it was a blue, a tonal blue. Um, and I said, you know, you'd mentioned these two go well together. I want them for the Rhinebeck hat. If you think there's another color that would work better, please feel free to substitute it. And instead, she sent me this purple. I'll take it off so you can see it a bit better, uh, which is pressed blayberries. I think blayberry is a colloquialism for blackberries. I'm not entirely, I don't know what a blayberry is. Um, so she sent me the pressed blayberries which has a much greater contrast. She actually, Helen is knitting, just knit a hat for herself in a very similar storm color with the blue that I had originally ordered. And, sorry, I just noticed my husband is home. Uh, and found the contrast wasn't entirely what she wanted in her hat, but in my hat, it is just brilliant. Um, I was able to knit the panel. Each panel is two rows of bobbles. It's knit sideways. Um, so two of these little blobby bits and I could knit one panel while watching Catherine at a plaything in an hour. So I've got 11 repeats of the panel. It'd be about 11 hours worth of work. It took me just over a week to knit it what with having boo-boos and being busy and all, but it absolutely fell off the needles and it's gorgeous. And I just know that I will be the belle of the ball wearing it. Anywho, I just saw my husband's coming home, so I'm going to go check on him and I'll be back later. He's focusing on our faces. Hello, I'm back again now with bonus children. I have my wonderful Christina here. Hello, Christina. Christina got her ears pierced this weekend. Do you want to show? So 
that's what we did on Saturday. Christine and I had a special girls only date. Just, well, I suppose if we had Catherine, it would still be girls only. But Christine and I had a special date just to ourselves and she also got a little pushin, a pushin unicorn, which obviously is the best kind of pushin. And now we are very into pushin in this household, aren't we? So, yes, my husband came in and now I have all of the children saying hello. Okay, let's not wiggle that around too much, sweet pea. She was saying, my was cat she, was saying hi. Was she saying hi? Okay. And that was why she was wiggling her tail. Yeah. Okay. Also, while I was up, I found another finished object, technically two, and they are these little stars. Christina's little stars. And that's the scintillation pattern by Hunter Hammerson. And I knit this one first, and I knit them on 2.5 needles, because that's what Miss Hammerson recommended for a worsted weight. And it hurt a lot. My hands felt it was much too tight, and I realized she meant US 2.5, and so I knit the other one on a 3.0, which is a US 3.0 millimeter, which is a US 2.5. And in case you're wondering how much half a millimeter makes, they are very different it's sized. The big star is trying to fly away, Mom. Is it trying to fly away? And this is my Christmas ornament. Yes, and Catherine's playing on the other side of us with a toy. So if you hear the clanking, that's Catherine's toy. Uh, this is just some yarn I had in stash. It doesn't have a ball band anymore, so I don't know what it is. It does look like it was hand dyed, but I'm sure I bought it for Christina Mama. back when she let me dress her in yellow and gold and orange, and now she prefers pink. So, making some stars. It's a very straightforward pattern once you've done it. Um, I'd say starting it can be a bit tricky, but then it works really well. And you get these really cute little stars that I'm hoping will make nice Christmas ornaments. Do you want to hold that one as well? I don't want to put it down. This one just did its gymnastics. Did it do its gymnastics? And, it's doing and we its have Catherine coming in. Don't shove your sister. It's doing its gymnastics deal. Okay, Mama. and here comes Catherine. Hello, crazy baby. Hello, crazy baby. Uh, Catherine is asking to nurse. That's why she has thrown herself across my lap like this. This is one of its gymnastics. Catherine has just recently had a peanut butter and jam sandwich, in case you're wondering what's all over her face. You say hi. You say hi. Christina, share the camera. So, this is my boo-boo's nurse. Okay, we'll take another little break, and I'll see if I can do more of this eternal video. I'm back again. This is probably going to be a very disjointed episode today. Uh, my, moving on to works in progress. So my next one to show you is my Brunsfield vest, which I've actually been working on. It's the last time I showed it, I was... Here's my stitch marker. So I was just starting this repeat. And I have done finish that repeat and I'm almost done with this next one and as you can see the X's and O's will line up so that the X's are on top of O's and the O's are on top of X's they're offset and the hearts are also offset well, this one's harder to see this probably isn't the best place that's where my row changes that'll be the side um, so I'll be hidden but you can see it a little better here and when I've washed and straightened it, it look really good. So I'm very happy. You know, making good progress. Uh, 
despite some distractions. And this is the Brunsfield Vest in Jameson and Smith Shetland Jumper Weight. And that's by Isolde Teague. And my other one are my DK version of the Hubble Bubble Double Trouble socks. Um, I know her username is Sparkle Duck. I can't remember the designer's real name. Uh, so I got to here on my first sock, my black sock, and I tried it on and they're pretty tight. I mean, predictably, the color work pulled the heel very tight and it's a bit tight um, right around where the heel goes. So I just, when I got to the end of a color, I just took the needles out and started my orange one. Uh, these were 56 stitches. And with this, I went all the way up to 60. I thought maybe I could do 58, but I thought go all the way up to 60. And then I can taper it for around the foot after the heel turn to make it snugger there, but looser in the leg. And Catherine, Catherine, please don't knock the pad down. Come here. Come here. And those are the only two things I've been working on since last time we spoke. But I was worried Catherine was going to knock my pad over, so that's why I stopped it again. I think that's largely where I'm going to wrap it up today. Um, haven't really talked about what we've been up to. Catherine started a new soft play class just in time for half term to start. So we went to one session. I missed the week before, but we've been a bit under the weather. Um, but we went to one session and now it's half term, so it's not going. And that was on Thursday, which is when Christina has her swim lessons as well. So we spent the entire day at the floral hall and it was just absolutely gorgeous with the changing colors. Um, the sun even came out when we went back with Christina in the afternoon. And it was even prettier than it had been when it was just me and Catherine in the morning. And we were able to go swimming. My friend's grown daughter is home from uni right now. And she said, would you like to go swimming? Because you have to have one adult for every child under seven years. And Chris does not swim. He sinks. So I said that would be wonderful. And she swam with Christina and I swam with Catherine. And we swam for an hour. Catherine's now playing with little things that are going bounce, 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 click, click, click on the floor. So that's what that noise is. Um, we, by happenstance, managed to run into two of Christina's friends. One on Monday when we went to a soft play. And one on Thursday when we went to the park. And then she also had a play date one day, but she's had a falling out with that friend. So I don't know when we'll see that friend again. I just keep looking over because that's where Christina is sat. And I got my flu jab, which is always a good one. I have asthma. Um, so that was, I got my flu jab. And Christina will get one, um, the inhalation in her nose at school. And Catherine's too young. But I've made an appointment for Chris to get one He's not covered by the NHS. I don't think he'll have to pay for his flu jab, but he can at least get one. And then hopefully we can have a flu immune season and we're doing our part for herd, immu herd immunity. And uh, Catherine and Christina have each had a day of being poorly. Catherine was poorly on Monday, which was after we'd gone to the doctor and then we'd gone to the soft play. So I don't know where she picked up being poorly, but she was sick a few times in the night. And then I'm looking down at Catherine, I'm sorry. And then last night, it was Christina's turn to be sick, so she's a bit under the weather today, which is why she's in her pajamas. And we're all having a bit of a cuddly day. And I think half term's going well so far. And we did some gardening on Wednesday. Waked up, I filled two large rubbish bins full of leaves. I don't 
do leaf mulch because I haven't worked out where and how to do it. And right now, let's just get rid of the leaves. Um, two full rubbish bins full of leaves. And at that, I only mostly got the back garden. I didn't do any of the side or the raised flower beds. So there's still a lot more leaves. Um, that is the downside of living next to the woods here. Is I get all the leaves from the plants in my garden and a whole bunch from the trees in the woods. It is pretty much the only downside to living next to the woods there. Uh, we don't get quite as much sunshine. You can see the sun is behind the trees. So we tend to have a slightly darker winter than we might if we lived at the other end of the street. But it's worth it to be so close to the forest to have all this beautiful color and not have neighbors on every side. Um, so I think that's everything I have for today. Today is Friday the 19th, if I didn't mention that, the 19th of October. And tomorrow I'm going to the Loch Ness Knit, Knit Festival. Since I quit my job right around when I started the podcast, um, I haven't had any time just to myself without the kids. So this will be my first day. Please, please don't, please don't. No, 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 don't touch. Ah! Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm going to the Loch Ness Knits Festival just by myself. On Saturday, I get a day to myself and... I imagine I'll have more to talk about next week for acquisitions. This week it was just the yarn to knit my hat. I imagine I might buy more yarn like this to knit other hats or things in that beautiful style. So I will talk to you next week, maybe, hopefully. I really want to do one of these every week, but it's very difficult when my children aren't uh, otherwise occupied. So that's it for today and thank you for watching. I will talk to you later. Bye.